Yes, exactly. Without a doubt. I wonder how SHOT Show is going to be this year. Can we talk about SHOT Show? Yeah, we'll talk about it. I've been talking about it the last few episodes, just what people think is going to happen in that yeah. kind of shit. So. All right, let's yeah. get started, man. This is, uh, is going to be good. All right, man. And then, of course, we'll do our jack wagons, too. All right, man. Hey, 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 lead heads. We are back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. I had to do a different intro. I always do the the uh, Matthew McConaughey intro. I did a different one. What? I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Give the, uh, give the lead heads a little something different on this uh, 361st episode, Garcia. Oh, 360 for 361. 361, baby. Congrats. Congratulations! Thank you, dude. thank you, thank Congratulations. you. Thank you. <sighs> Going into our seventh year, you should have that button. <sighs> the, yeah, the crowd goes in. wild. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <Clap>. <laughs> but I, you know, I had every intention of having you on my three hundred sixtieth, but uh, due to circumstances, both on your end and my end, literally and figuratively. <laughs> 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 we, we had to postpone this thing uh, due to some illnesses on both our parts, but uh, we, we finally made it happen. Uh, you braving the tornadoes there in the uh, southern, southeastern part of the United States and uh, and making it for this interview, man. I appreciate you coming on. Hey, Ladies. dude, it's, a, it's an honor to be on, on the Talking Lead uh podcast dude i think this is our, i think this is our first one outside a shot show and and i haven't it introduced is. you yet ladies and gentlemen it's it's our good buddy senior team leader joseph garcia joining us <laughs> he gives it a thumbs up <laughs> i gave you a thumbs up hey leadheads how you guys doing marty it's good to be with you man thank you for having me on absolutely man and uh this is uh like i said this is a treat for me because this is the first time you and i have uh, done an interview outside of shot show so it's going to be a little more relaxed. Uh, we're going to get a little more detail. Uh, focus, awesome, dude. Focus more on the awesome things that you've got going on with C C S A U A U. Yeah, say yeah. you. How do you like that? Say you. Say, you. say me. <laughs> say me. <laughs> <laughs> say it together in harmony. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was awesome, good. dude. But, that, that stands for Correction Special Applications Group yeah, or Unit. Sorry. Re, you reinvented yourself uh, over the last couple of years, and um, uh, apparently it's doing well. And we're going to talk about some of the awesome things that you've got going on with that unit and with uh, with your buddies, with your dogs. Uh, special yeah, announcement. My, my four legged, my four legged four fur missiles. Yeah. So how many I do you have the, now? The JDAM. Um, so the unit, uh, we're running, a, we're running, uh, almost a dozen total. And that includes the ones that are in training, you know, cause we like to bring them in every two years, roughly. So by the time one comes in, the other one's going to be two years old, four years old. And before we pull them offline at eight years old, you know, there's always some in the pipeline cause it's, their training's about two and a half years. And uh, so by the time those knuckleheads get into operations, the guys who were their who were their pups before are now becoming alpha dogs. So it's a way to keep the continuity of the program really strong. And is Max still with us? He is. And, uh, you know, God. Max, is my Max is my boy. And it's just a day to day. Every day we get with him, man. I'm just so grateful, dude. Seriously. Just so grateful. Um, you know, the uh, just so people know, um, you know, he has cancer. And it's kind of uh, spread throughout uh, multiple parts of his body now. Um, you know, Max has had a freaking tough life in it operationally, you know, because he was a trailblazer for us. And, um, you know, in his retirement, you know, that's where things kind of got caught up with him. But that guy's had bones broken. He's had his face slashed. He's had, um, I mean, he's had internal serious injuries, dude. Uh, he's a beast. In his retirement, though, right? In his retirement, he's had an amazing retirement. And you know, his personality, regardless of what I've just said there, his, his personality is is amazing. Everybody loves that dog. Oh, yeah, that, sweet that dog. Sweet, sweet that, dog. That can go from, you know, <laughs> the kill box to, uh, hey, how you doing? I, I call him like <laughs> the, the Mike Tyson voice. Hey, Marty, how are you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Except the, he'll bite the quiet, unassuming <laughs> type until he gets riled up, right? <laughs> he'll bite oh your ear Oh, my God, off. yeah. <laughs> he's a big boy, too. In his heyday, he was like 128, man. Oh, so man. He, was a, he was a big boy. I mean, people say, well, how come you never had that dog, you know, 
do I never seen you with that dog between your legs? I said, because if that dog got between my legs, I'd, I'd be riding him. That's how tall he is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like you know, I can, 31 inches tall. <laughs> I can relate to that because you know I had uh, the Great Dane Oshi, and uh, he was yeah. probably he was probably at least four inches taller than uh, than Max. Yeah, you know, he was 180 oh, pounds. Oh my god, man, that, that, that's a big dog, dude. Yeah, he was he was a big big boy. dog, big boy. But uh, yeah, big I'm glad dog, Max is turkey. still with us and that he's uh you know he's living a good comfortable life now. Give he him, is, man. Give we, him a rub on the head. Yep. You know, you know, he was yep, the first when he started. He was around when we did our he first was. interview back almost. It's been oh. over five years ago, man. Do you remember when I came into that studio <laughs> that you had at Shot Show? And you know, I think you were surprised when I sat him up on that chair and put the headphones on him, and he was just staring at you like you were on crack. <laughs> oh man, it was so awesome! Was, I was just amazed by him. Just I was in awe when he walked in. Just you know, his stature, just you know, the the muscularity and the discipline and. You know, he just walked in confident like he owned the studio, and you're like, you know, get up in the chair. He hopped up in that chair. You put the headphones on. Dude, he was... He was ready to talk. He, he, <laughs> oh, my God, man. That dude, I mean, honestly, if he had a voice, I'd say he had, he'd have a Mike Tyson voice. I mean, I tell people that all the time, where Mo <laughs> has a Hannibal Lecter voice. Okay, and there's a, there's, a, there's a complete difference with those two dogs and their personalities, but... Yeah, I remember we took a whole a whole bunch of pictures, and you had a, you had some guy on there, and I can't remember his name, but he had some kind of magnet that went on the vest. Do you remember that dude? Yeah, so that was and, our um, sponsors, was, the uh, artificial shoulder pocket. Right. Yeah, dude. I was like, Brian, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I don't know whatever happened to that, but I remember just walking in. I'm thinking, man, this is a pretty professional studio here. <laughs> so uh, then I'm like. <laughs> Does everybody have beards in here except that dude? You know, right. my dog has a beard, so I have a beard. Of course, you know, Caltech Chad was in there with us. Absolutely, rocking dude. his yeah. beautiful beard that he has. Oh yeah, that's why I'm grown. That's probably why I, I've grown one. Try to look like him. He's like the model for beards. Well, during that during that episode, I mean, that's kind of what you kept talking about was you know everybody's fabulous beards and how you were going to grow one. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I was, I, and I didn't have a freaking beard, did I? No, it wasn't until a couple of years later that I went through the stress. <laughs> well, it looks, it looks good on you, dude. You're, you're rocking it well. Thanks, man. But if you let head, you want to go back and listen to that episode. It's TLP 105. I believe it's 105. Uh, and uh, we had, it was uh, when I had uh, Curtis from VSO Gun Channel on, it co-hosting with me there for about a month or so. And yeah. Um, we cut in the interview that we did with uh, senior team leader Garcia, Chad, the guys from Atlas Defense dropped in, uh, joined us during that interview, and I don't know, there were several people kept coming in and out. I think Pinkus stopped in a couple of times. So. Keith likes everything about the great outdoors. He's a lot like us. Whether we're bow hunting in the back country or plinking in the backyard, we want to enjoy each experience to the fullest. Keltec's 22 caliber P17 is Heath's go-to pistol for a good time on the range, on the trail, and anywhere in between. Weighing in at only 14 ounces with a full magazine, its compact size makes it easy to conceal or tuck away in a small pack, pocket, or space. It comes out of the box ready with a fiber optic front sight, a threaded barrel, a Picatinny rail, and a price point for any budget. With three 16-round magazines, it's ready for hours of pure, unadulterated enjoyment. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accurate, and it's a damn sweet marvel of plinking innovation. The Keltec P17. It's more bang for less buck. It was, Dude, you always have you always have cool people on your show. Seriously, where where do you where do you find these people, man? Whether it's technology, guns, I mean, I mean that's just like, our industry, man. Backgrounds, man. <laughs> that's our industry. You know, it's just you you throw a rock and you're gonna hit you know somebody cool and inter interesting in our and you know fun to talk to in our industry. So we have no shortage of personalities. <laughs> no, you never have a shortage of. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's pretty pretty awesome. Dude. I like being on this show. <laughs> Listening to your podcast is funny. Well, I appreciate that, buddy. So you're going to get to take part in a, a segment that uh, you don't normally we don't normally do at Shot Show, and we call it our Trains and Planes segment, Garcia. What? And, and trains and planes. Trains and planes, because we have our jack wagons that we haul off on the talking lead jack wagon train, and then we have our lead okay. head brigade heroes that get a ride on Lead Force One. So we like to parade <laughs> them around and treat them like royalty. Yeah. You know? Awesome, dude. 
So, awesome, man. So we're going to do that segment now. So, Gunny, bring that train in. Who rides Zipper Pie, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week. So brace yourself, baby. Awesome, man. All right, so the train has stationed, and we're going to take <laughs> care of some, some Jack Wagons. So just to, to fill you in, Garcia, on what a Jack Wagon is, and I think you probably get the idea what it is. Uh, it's yeah. so, somebody you know, or something, a company, maybe a product that we want to, you know, we want to call out as being uh, stupid, buffoonery, um, asinine, you know, just something that you know, some something or somebody we want to call out as being a jack wagon, and we need to make people aware so that they can avoid it at all costs. So oh, wow, so I'll start us off. Just to just to get you warmed Please. up. <laughs> um, Were you gonna say good year? Were you about to say good year? <laughs> I, no, I'll save that one for you. You have to let me know. I don't know what's going on with Goodyear, so that you'll educate me on this one. Yeah, absolutely, man. So this one is uh, from the Truth About Guns. Uh, Dan Zimmerman uh, did an article, and it's about people selling stickers on Facebook are actually selling guns. And what? This is a story the Wall Street Journal did an exclusive report on. Uh, so apparently, crap. well, you know that Instagram and Facebook and these social media platforms have these strict rules, guidelines yeah. about anything doing, you know, with a weapon, a gun, a knife, you know, whatever it may be. Huh. And, you know, they severely... They se- they severely block us uh, in our industry in getting our message out to you know people who want our message because they subscribe to yeah. our pages so obviously they want to learn more about us and what we're doing but unfortunately we uh, we get choked down by by these uh, social media outlets hmm. but you know whatever That's they sure. they own it they can do whatever the hell they want in my opinion I don't you know I don't care there there's other ways around it you know. Some entrepreneur is going to come up and invent something and uh, take the place of this that's 2A friendly. But until then, you know, we're relying heavily on these uh, liberal owned and ran institutions. Communist. But anyways, so the Wall Street Journal uh, built a report that they did as exclusive as if they'd somehow unearthed the story of the century. Facebook can't stop the signal and never will. Now a new tactic involves post- purporting to sell stickers along images of gun makers' logos. Sellers typically ask an interested party to send a private message via the service for more information. Several sellers contacted by the journal responded to say they were actually selling guns, not stickers, and provided details and pricing. <laughs> oh, my so, God. So basically what they've done is they did some sort of a, an algorithm search for gun stickers and uh, all the ones that came up, they sent them messages, and I guess they were trying to, you know, uncover this underground gun selling ring or whatever you know they're calling it. Uh, but I'm looking at one of the posts that they did right here, and uh, it doesn't say who it is, but this person or this company says, "Come in and get a free Glock sticker as well as your choice." of either a Glock pin or a Glock keychain with the purchase of any Glock pistol or Glock knife while supplies last. So I'm reading that, and there's nothing to me that states that, hey, we're selling a sticker, but hey, we're wink, wink, we're selling a gun. They come out and say we're selling guns at our store, which is completely legal. Um... And if you do that, then, you know, we're throwing in a pen or a sticker or whatever with your purchase. So I don't see anything nefarious or <laughs> other than it's against their, their guidelines, you know, Facebook's guidelines. Uh, I don't see you know, anything illegal or I, wrong with that. What, sometimes what, I'd wish that Facebook would put as much emphasis on those sex trafficking, child sex trafficking, oh, amen. stupid ass websites and people who are doing some netflix man bunch of idiots <laughs> idiots dude i mean seriously man is, is, working at 12 years old and they're called they're giving that a show 
and they're saying it's art. You got to be kidding me. I wish my yeah. dog could twerk and give me and give me a contract. I guarantee. I guarantee your dogs could twerk. <laughs> if you, yeah. If you taught them, you they, the they definitely ironic, could do it. You know what the ironic thing about this whole, I want to say this uh, online policing, which you're just reading, is I'm, I can't believe it. First of all, number one, but this online policing crap. There's surely's got to be enough money and enough brains out there for somebody to start some kind of. Like Facebook, how they're policing everything, or Instagram, or all the social medias, policing everything. Why can't somebody start something that is po- a powerhouse that won't get policed? Do you, don't, do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's I just, understand. It's just it's crazy. I understand. I understand. But, you know, they're and private then, They're private companies, and they can do what they want. You know? We need to start a private company. You should start a private company. But, you know, I see I see crap like this all the time. And Keep me $40 the, like, million. Dollars people don't realize <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see what you see what people are doing with this, uh, you know, the sex trafficking or the the um, just the exploiting of children. I mean, who is that Cardi B or whatever her face is? I don't know, and, man. And, I mean, dude. I mean, honestly, there's some crazy ass things going out there, but nobody's policing them because you know when they talk, it's art. As long as you know you're against the the as long as you're against the Second Amendment or freedom of speech or whatever. It's or just you want to kill Christians or you know whatever. As long, you know they'll they'll allow all that too. That that kind of talk. Yeah. Right. Then again, if you go if you're working for um, Goodyear, which they kind of got a punch in the gut, right, with uh, Trump, and that's why I love Trump. Okay, I'm just gonna go out and say it. Um, Bring it on. So what the, what happened at Goodyear? I'm not familiar with this. Come on, man. Goodyear said. Um, that you couldn't use any kind of political, no political type of paraphernalia can be worn by their employees, with the exception of Black Lives Matter, BLM, mm-hmm. uh, and two other ones, LGBTQ, RST, whatever, and um, <laughs> a- another one. But th- but if you had Blue Lives Matter or if you had Trump or MAGA, that was not allowed in the workplace. So what does Trump do? Well, Trump basically says i think our tires are wearing out on our on our uh, government vehicles uh, on our government well no on his vehicle right uh-huh. on, on limo one the beast and he goes michelin's a good brand <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you look at social media they got people who who um, are taking down the goodyear brand and so within 48 hours goodyear reverses themselves and says if you have blue lives matter it's okay you know, Black Lives Matter. It's okay. That's the problem with some of these employees, man. Employers. You know, you, you cater to a small organization, and I call BLM a small organization because if people really realize where their money is going to, or if you did your homework on BLM, it's just a Marxist organization itself. I mean, look, I personally like DLM. I don't know if you heard about that. You know, Dogs Lives Matter, and uh, I'm supporting. I'm supporting. You know, that organization itself. DLM. <laughs> DLM. So just remember that DLM. Dogs' lives matter, dude. Absolutely, so. <laughs> absolutely. I agree. I agree. But that you know, that's you know, in today's environment, it's. I'm not surprised that Goodyear did that. Um, no. The fact that they came and, and reversed their uh, decision, I, that's surprising that they actually. Yeah, in 48 hours, dude. 48 hours. Yeah. And that's why I, I love Trump because, unlike any other president, this guy. If you're the media. I would say it's kind of fair now, if you ask me personally, and and let me let me clarify that fair que- that that fair statement. Mm-hmm. When I say fair, I mean, can you imagine Trump going up against CNN and CNN by itself? He would put CNN out of business, right? It's taking the entire media, liberal media, to just hold this, try to hold this guy down, and Trump's people, man, and I mean the followers, I mean people who have their eyes open and who understand the truth. You can't stop that, dude. And that's what the problem is. The, 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 the liberal media, fake news, right? It's like having a, a painter's bucket, a five-gallon painter's bucket. <laughs> and the social media that, that Trump has, that's, that the power behind him, is like the holes in a bucket, okay? And the liberal media is a bucket itself, and, and, and all the holes have been shot in it. So no longer there are stupid lies, you know, like MSNBC. I that's just an entertainment TV, right? Anytime they, the people are moving their mouth, it's like an attorney. They're lying. I'm kidding about the attorney because I have I have a couple of great attorneys. <laughs> Attorneys are good to have, man. I'm not man. kidding you, man. 
<laughs> I'm not kidding you, dude. It's like every time you, you turn a channel on MSNBC or CNN um, or any of those other networks, they're freaking just exaggerating or it's gloom and doom or it's death. We're all going to die. Oh, Remember? yeah. And it's on both sides, you know. It's, it's oh, on yeah. Both sides. Absolutely. Listen. So I, after Trump made that uh, that statement, and I'm I'm pulling this from a news source here. I don't know, IBD, IBT, I don't know who this is, but it says – uh, after that, uh, the Lincoln Project and Republican voters against Trump have debuted a Goodyear-themed advertisement attacking uh, Donald Trump after he suggested a boycott of the tire company. Uh, it says they they spent four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars airing the commercial ad, the Goodyear ad. Uh, four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars that could have gone toward. Much, much better things, you know. Well, when you got people like, I don't know, George Soros, Soros, the Clinton Foundation, uh, all these liberal organizations who can support these, quote, Republicans coming out, um, these rhinos. Listen, I'm not one of those guys that's just, you know, Republican by name or anything like that. I'm a conservative dude. I always have been. And um, but. What I see going on in this country is absolutely horrendous, dude. I'm just saying that as an observer, an outside it, observer. It really is, and it's got a, it's got a lot to do with the out of controlness of of what people are allowed to say. You know, the defamation of of somebody. You know, back in the day, to say something false about somebody, uh, you there were consequences for that. Oh man, you remember know? the media? Remember, remember Dan Rather's? Remember how how Dan Rather's got shamed out of out of being an anchor, uh, forced into early retirement. Look at that guy. What's his face on on NBC now? Who they brought back? Um, you know, I'm talking about that guy who was on on um, on uh. NBC. But um, the other dude, man, who's like uh, Mr. Model, and he talks like he's most sophisticated. But Peter Jennings got got uh, brought out. You know, and he got he got shamed into you know lying on, on certain stories. Sure, but sure. Um, Tom broke off. Um, exaggerated certain stories. I mean, there was accountability then, right? Mm -hmm. And today, there is no accountability. And everybody who's doing these, quote, fact-checking, fact I've been fact-checked just once, okay? <laughs> just <laughs> by, once. Lovely, by lovely Instagram. Yeah. Um, and uh, they gave me a warning for my content that I put up. I'm like, you got to be kidding. It's the last time I post something up like that. Um, the, uh, I don't know, just things today. There was a movie and I don't know if you remember this movie. It's but do you remember that movie called Political? I think it was called Political U or University. And um, I, I'm trying to think of the, the 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 there's the dude Political U or it was about political correctness like in universities. Like Y O U or U letter U. Probably U. I don't know. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of the guy who played on the HBO series. He was an agent. You know what I'm talking about for this. Um, for this, these entourage, uh, entourage. Who's that guy? Piven plays the agent. Jeremy Piven plays the agent. Yeah, whatever he is. So yeah, but whatever his name is. But he plays the agent for those those other guys, and he's got a witty sense of humor. But he played in this movie called Political. Maybe I'm wrong. You're uh, wrong because that's not coming up. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I feel like an idiot now. Is it an old for, movie? It is. It's probably in the nineties. And um, yeah, you're I'm trying your to age. figure out the movies. No, that's what I hear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Twenty bucks judgment. It's a c PCU right there, dude. PCU. Thank you very much. PCU. Okay. Do you remember this movie or not? Nope. It was Political Correct University. That's what it stands for, right? And um, they had to cater to the gays, to the geeks. A to high the school rockets. senior visits college for the weekend and stays at the wildest house on campus. Yep. Uh, Jeremy Piven, Chris Young, Megan Ward, John Favreau, who uh, directed the Avengers. Um, I'm not seeing anybody else's. Un they talk about the what an unofficial group runs the former Balls and Shaft frat house, <laughs> a highly disorganized manner currently inhabited the gutter. Let's see. Um, so how did this movie get brought into our conversation? <laughs> because that is today's society. I guess. You gotta watch all right, so today I'm telling you, man, after we hang up, after you know, we, we, we terminate this wonderful podcast, you gotta watch it. Just pull it up somewhere at PCU. There you and go. it's I'm where it's what it. we're living in today, right? But my question to you is this who is they? 
And who are they and how big is they that are manipulating and able to steer this country? I mean, literally, man, because if you think about it, right? They and are I'm, the, the Marx, Marxists that want to collapse our, our current but Marty, our who, republic. Who, who is they? How, how big of a group is it? Apparently because Apparently it's second, China. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right, dude. Because I, I, the second it's got to be an outside country. You know, China's oh going to just let us self-destruct within, and they're just going to walk in and just take it over. You know, they're already buying up all our real estate. TikTok. You know? TikTok. So, I mean, that's just, that's, that's one of their plants, you know, TikTok. Definitely. Oh my God, dude, I'm just disgusted with what I've seen. I mean, the last shot show, if someone would have told you, Hey, leadhead Marty, guess what's going to happen in, in less than 40 days from the time we left shot show, you're going to be quarantined, dude, because we've got some kind of scamdemic. I mean, um, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, some kind of, uh, uh, comedy vid uh, 19 going on this china wuhan virus that is no no more um worse than a cold or flu and no more than are, a bad flu yeah i mean seriously dude well you, you, you know and did you catch a credit shot show or not i was gonna say and we've had this i've had this conversation with several other people on the show that attended shot show and every year without fail somebody gets what's called the shot show crud which is typically a lot worse than your typical flu anyway, to begin with. Oh, yeah. So I think, you know, we've all been exposed to this, this Wu-Nan, uh, Ooh, you know, COVID Wuhan. flu in the past. So, um, you know, again, you know, it's all political. And I think when the election happens, this is all going to go away. The flu, uh, it's gonna COVID disappear. is going to disappear. It's going to disappear. But what you're going to see is you're going to see what what actually what their actual motivation was in causing this worldwide panic and scare. Uh, you know whether it's a one world order kind of thing or you know whatever. There's going to be several things that come into place that you're going to go, oh, that's what they were doing behind our backs while they had us looking at the the left hand while the right hand was over here doing this stuff. Dude, I'm telling you, right? The numbers are skewed. How is it in New York – come on, work with me for a second. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. But how is it in New York they had tens of thousands of people die or – yeah, tens of thousands of people die. How you know everyone's saying, oh, man, there's like 5 million people infected with this coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many, are, how many are, have died? That's my question. Well, no, you know, you're, we're never going to get an accurate number because they're never. misreporting – people's deaths. So somebody who died of legitimate, you know, heart failure or, uh, exactly. or, uh, cancer or, you know, whatever, a car wreck, yep. they reported it as COVID. If you, yeah, so if what you're going to see COVID. is obviously, you know, they're trying to pad those stats and make the, the COVID deaths up higher. But what you're going to see is, is all these other deaths that normally occur are going to drop. Yeah, exactly. Dude. And listen, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. My wife's a trauma nurse, and she sees the numbers. She sees what comes in. She knows. I mean, they tell her how to report things. And so, yeah. you know, I, a lot of people scratch our heads, man. We go. I guarantee you, if I'd have gone to the hospital the other day with my food poisoning, they would have diagnosed me with COVID. If you had COVID, right? Number one. No. So if, even if I didn't, I guarantee really? you. They would, they would have said, you're showing symptoms of COVID here. Oh, probably without well, even testing. Here's the deal, right? And and this is something that that some very close people that I know can attest to. So someone went in for a, uh, I guess they had an, they had a diabetic attack and they passed away, but they were diagnosed with uh, this uh, Wuhan. I mean, with the COVID nineteen, they tested positive. Mm -hmm. So in their death certificate, it was cause of death COVID nineteen, right? Mm -hmm. But the actual underlying was they had a freaking diabetic attack and they died. They died okay? of diabetes, so, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't the COVID that killed them. It was the underlying was the diabetes that killed them. Right. But do you realize they get, paid for the, they get paid for the COVID-19? They yeah. get paid We've talked for about every that several patient times. that comes in. Yep. And and here's, here's some things that I found out. And this is firsthand. Every time they put on a PPE suit, every time somebody's diagnosed with COVID, there's somebody auditing them, right? They get paid for that, dude. 
on yep. a regular basis. And so now that the money's drying up like it's dried up in New York, isn't it amazing how the curve is kind of bent around the corner and gone downhill? Now it's flatlined. Yeah. Because my question is this. If we can do this for COVID, right, this like we can get it under control or whatever it is, how can we can't do that for the cold, the flu, tuberculosis, or any of those Diabetes, contagion types of Alzheimer's? You know, how can we can't do it for any of that stuff, right? And, you know, like meningitis or what have you. So it's really simple. And I'm not going to political. I'm, you know, there's so much going on here that, honestly, people like us, and I'm just everyday Joe Schmo, and all I know how to do is I'm a professional pick up dog poop crap, run my dogs, <laughs> deploy my dogs on on downrange. And, um, but I see this, right, firsthand. I'm thinking, I know I'm an idiot, but those numbers are – kind of idiot proof yeah. and our you listeners know. you know americans are smart and they know that th this is not accurate the majority of the people out there know that this is wrong it's not accurate there's something else going on yeah and you know it's just it's going to come out the truth will come out eventually yeah. and uh and nobody's i guarantee you, nobody will be held accountable and it'll just be I, part of history that just this happened and life moved on and people you know continue Dude, I'm so embarrassed for this country. I rem do you remember having a cold and your parents would look at you and say, are you dying? You're going to school. Do you remember that? I don't oh, know yeah. if that, that, that happened in your household. Oh, no. You needed more than a cold. You know how many sick home. days I had at school? <laughs> zero. Dude. I had zero. I had perfect attendance. Oh, my God. For, yeah. From kindergarten all the way through uh, to when I graduated high school, 12th grade. Well, perfect weird. attendance. That's why you're talking lead, and you get all of your your uh, guests on your show to make sure they're on perfect attendance. Except me, <laughs> except, except you. me, except, right? except that, Garcia. All right, except we're gonna move. Garcia. We're gonna move on. We're gonna get out of this rabbit hole of the the COVID because we could talk years on this bullcrap. So I'm gonna right. do another jack wagon here. This comes from California, an active shooter oh. situation. Oh God. Uh, and it's N I P O M O Nipomo, California. I would assume. Did you I have no idea. Don't ask me. Basically, what it was was there's a guy at this gas station, and uh, nobody knows what happened at this point because it ha it's happened so early, but they, they suspect it's mental illness. Uh, and this guy st goes into the store, starts firing off rounds. He comes out, starts firing off rounds at people yep. at the gas pumps. The police come, um, confront him, shoot him, kill him. Um, uh, nobody was, nobody was shot. Nobody was hurt. Thank goodness. Um, but there's this, you know, there's suspect that it was, you know, something to do with, with mental illness, but, um, and you guys can look this up and you can read, you know, the stories about it. But what, what makes my Jack wagon train here is the, um, California's recommended active shooter response. And this is on ready.gov. It says, if there's an active shooter, here's what's recommended by ready.gov. Stop, drop, and kiss your ass. <laughs> basically, basically, stop, drop, kiss your ass goodbye. It says, run and escape if possible. Getting away from the shooter or shooters is top priority. Leave your belongings behind and get away. Help others oh, escape if possible, but evacuate regardless of what others... Uh, or whether others agree to follow. Warn and prevent individuals from entering an area where the active shooter may be. Call 911. Next, <laughs> next is hide if escape is not possible. Hide. Hide. Okay, where am I going <laughs> to hide behind a gas pump that could explode? Um, it says, get out of the shooter's view and stay very quiet. Silence all electronic devices and make sure they won't vibrate because that's what I'm thinking when bullets are flying over my head is to turn my phone down. No. Lock, <laughs> lock and block doors, close blinds, and turn off lights. Don't hide in groups. Spread out along walls or hide separately to make it more difficult for the shooter. Try to communicate with police silently. Use text message, social media. Stay in place until law enforcement gives you all clear your hiding place should be out of the shooter's view and provide protection if shots are fired in your direction. Their last one is fight as an absolute last resort. Commit to your actions and act as aggressively as possible against the shooter. 
recruit others to ambush the shooter with makeshift weapons like chairs, fire extinguishers, scissors, books, etc. <laughs> Be prepared so, to cause severe lethal injury to the shooter. Throw items and improvise weapons to distract and disarm the shooter. Hmm. All right. What if you didn't make guns illegal and and civilians could legally arm themselves and Did shoot back? Do they just say use lethal force? That, Be that, prepared to use lethal force? It, it, that That is exactly what they said. Wait a minute. You mean they're not doing what New York says and to call a social worker? They can resolve it with a social worker. Be prepared to cause severe or lethal injury to the shooter. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I'm offended. I'm severely offended now. Yeah. What if it's not a stand your ground law of uh, state? <laughs> yeah. You then you're going to get sued. The eye with the scissors, pair of scissors. You're getting sued. You're going to get arrested. <laughs> you're going to go to jail. So uh, I mean, they're 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 actively telling you to defy laws right there. But all this is is irrelevant if you're armed and you can arm yourself. I mean, yes, the number one is if if you can get away from the situation. You know, get away from the situation. But some people's conscience won't let them do that if there are other unarmed uh, people around. You know, they just, you know what's they're so going to have that instinct to go in and they're going to want to, you know, stop the, the threat. I mean, honestly, dude, seriously, I get this thing, right? But I don't know about you, man. This is what I'm talking about. Things are changing. And they're telling us that um, how do you defund the police? I mean, did they really believe that that social workers and send send a social worker to deal with the situation first, and then if need be, call the police? I mean, yeah. seriously, uh, we talked about it on a few shows, uh, you know, back too that you know that that's their standard operating procedures now. Is if there's a um, if it's mentally ill, if someone's mentally considered to be mentally ill in a yep. a firearm situation. Then, like you said, a mental health professional is supposed to uh, intervene instead of a police officer. Hey, do you know there's a lot of people that's taking that that uh, advice to heart? You know what they're doing? Well, if you ask the ATF, it is the highest. Um, what is it? What are they saying this quarter or this year? The most uh, requested, or or they have it's the highest level of people purchasing firearms, right? So there's a lot. No, of it's unprecedented. <laughs> Millions, millions and millions and millions of people who haven't bought firearms before have bought firearms during this time. And, and okay, okay, so this is the second thing. Do you know what the second highest thing that people are purchasing now? Those who can? Toilet paper. I'll give you, I'll give you, <laughs> well, now you can find it, just FYI. Now you, I found a place where you can buy cases of it at a, at a grocery store. But do you know what the second thing is that, 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 uh, that people who can afford it are buying? I'll give you a hint. Four legs some fur or a hair and has a tail. A dog? And it goes woof, woof. A dogs. puppy? Protection dogs are on an increase, dude, in this country now. I'd say not only Seriously. that, but just but just pets in general, dogs for pets in general, because people have been cooped up, quarantined. They've gotten themselves, you know, some companionship. Yeah, well. So definitely. My, but, dogs, don't, my dogs don't necessarily spoon with me, but they love fast food. <laughs> <laughs> What's their favorite? Depends. Depends, depends on where you're on, at. Jack in the box. Depends on how, how how muscular or how fast they want to um, they want to run. Depends if they're outside the wire or if they're in the wire. Dude, I can't believe it depends that, if <laughs> I can't believe that nobody's come up with a, a fast food restaurant for dogs. A drive through oh, oh. fast food restaurant for dogs. <laughs> that would be funny. That would be absolutely funny. Right. But, oh well. My yeah. dogs are pacifists, man. They don't like they don't like uh, biting. The Fiocchi family has been producing high quality ammunition since 1876. In 2020, Fiocchi is launching a full line of premium products, everything from self and home defense to the long range categories. The Fiocchi Blue Guardian line will feature specially tuned products specifically for home and self defense, featuring lead free technology and the only NATO certified zero pollution primer in the world. Fiocchi is a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. Fiocchi trains, Fiocchi protects. So my, no my heroes for the Leadhead Brigade uh, Lead Force One 
are your dogs. Oh, really? Yep. I'm throwing I'm throwing the giant schnauzer on lead force. Oh, man. Majestic that's, animal, that's pretty, smart. Intelligent, and powerful. Intelligent, powerful. I mean, all the the good stuff. And uh, that's what we yeah, want to I'm talk the, about now because you've got some awesome things going on. Uh, we do. You've had a you've had like this documentary or TV series going on yep. with was it Discovery or one of those channels? Yep. Uh, working with talk about um, that. We're working with a couple of cable networks right now, and the most recent uh, documentary or slight documentary that's been done on us has been done by Tactical Life Magazine by the Athlon Group, and it's spinning off into something else. Mm -hmm. uh, man, that thing has gotten like tremendous amounts of views. I mean, literally, it's it's kind of kind of gone. I don't know. I'm not really your type of guy that sits there and and I'm not an Instagram guru when it comes to shooting. Mm -hmm. I can kind of I can kind of hold my own, I think. <clears throat> But well, now you, know, you hold the record. Do you still hold the record for the um, the fastest uh, KSG dump there with eight rounds, one point eight seven seconds? Yeah, yep. I think I, I think I still do, and it's okay. Are you impressed? I remembered that. Yeah, I am, man. Because everyone time? was watching. <laughs> 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 but you know what? It, it's being able to shoot, and and people say, "Well, man, how many takes that take?" And you seen me shoot? I don't take any. Okay, You're a one take mofo. Maybe. A, Maybe I might do a warm up if it's a new gun, but other than that, if it's a KSG, just put it in my hand and, and let's go to work because it's my day in day out weapon. You know, moving and working in in, in the facilities all over all over the world that we that they send us to. But I'm going to give you a little bit of fact real quick uh, for okay. your uh, facts, I should say. So this is our facts uh, to fight the myths. Well, no, I'm going to give you facts about the dogs since you, you said my, oh, for my the heroes, uh, okay. the giant schnauzers are the heroes, right? Yeah. Do you realize that right now, currently in the world, there's no device that is more sensitive in picking up odors than a dog's nose? No, I know that. Yeah. None. Now, seriously? Yeah. That's why they use them at airports and po oh police sniffing God. dogs. I and Yeah. I thought I was giving you something, man. Damn yeah. it. In the military, like, you know, sni sniffing out the IEDs and shit. Yeah. All right. Well, here's the second well, thing. The maybe our listeners didn't know that. The top of your dog's nose, when, when they inhale, you know how they have a little split on the top of their nose, right? Yeah. And uh, so when they inhale, it's like a vortex. So when they suck it in, it's like a vortex. So they're, 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 what they're bringing in their nose is actually like a sensor. And, man, it, I mean, it picks up the most minute – microns of particulates yeah oh we're i mean we're talking some serious odor man that these dogs can pick up so don't hit your dog in the nose and don't freaking you know i tell people whenever they, they they come say can i pet your dog only on the ass end or the back but do not touch it their head i don't let anyone as you know touch my dog's head and um, except me <laughs> Well, you can. I mean, as long as, as as long as you're going to give them a little bit of tongue, it's okay. Well, you know so, how it is. <laughs> they're good. They're big sweeties. Yeah. So our boy, uh, our boys are, are are doing amazing, and it's funny about you know the uh, these networks now. And dogs seem to be kind of a popular thing, and uh, the one um, one group that we turned down happened to be um, Netflix. Yeah. We said no. Thank you. You said no, no. Thank you. you said no to Netflix. No. I did. Oh my god. We gosh. did. And 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 they're talking. They were talking a mini series. I can talk about it now because it's because the uh, our our stuff is expired now. It's been over a year, so okay. it's expired. The NDA expired. But uh huh. Anyways, let's talk just, about it. it. Just didn't, it just didn't feel right, man. The I'm I'm interested in how Netflix right. operates. Yeah. So they approached you. I went to, uh, they, so so they flew us to to L A to go to Netflix's headquarters. And um, interesting, man. You know, I, I've never been to Netflix headquarters, and well, I don't kinda, think many I know, people I have. Next, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I thought Netflix was like, you know, it's just a. a, a um, you remember the old Errol's video stores and the old, um, the the old uh, what's Blockbuster video? Place? Yeah, thought, I'm just walking into one big mega. Um, you thought you were going to do a store, Blockbuster? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's what i got man uh, i think these guys just load up load up videos online or whatever so i mean i'm not gonna be impressive what the hell that is a massive I, complex with multiple i'm I mean, sure it's they've got like a billion dollar do. facility oh man it's it's it, you walk in and and immediately to your right after you clear the security you've got a cafeteria where everything is free okay and then you have a nice cool lounge and they put you in these what they call mini prep 
conference room areas. So you can go, with, you can stay with your group in these little mini areas. You can discuss your plans. I bet you it's all bugged out. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Then they bring you. Then they bring you to the uh, the main the main conference rooms. And then if they like you, they bring you to one of the other floors where the executives come down and they start speaking to you, right? And start dealing with the contract stuff. So we made it to a, cu- a couple floors up. <laughs> yeah. So you, you didn't make it to yeah. that final floor, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a final floor. It's one of the floors, but it wasn't on the ground floor anymore. <laughs> and um, well, you got off the ground I knew floor. What was, uh, I knew what I was on my way down once we were going up, right? So... <laughs> So it just just Anyways. didn't work out. It wasn't uh, it, didn't yeah, work out for them or work out for you. Uh, no, it didn't work out for me personally. And and let me just tell you, had nothing to do about had nothing to do with the money. It had everything to do with what they were going to film, how they were going to film it, how they were going to capture it. And um, you know, we were going to work with a, a a very well known crew that that has worked with us in the past. And it just wasn't feeling right with the with the kind of things that they wanted to see, right? Yeah. And almost like a, a, a quasi violent yet political correctness way. Mm. And uh, but the biggest thing for us is about control of our security procedures and our our tactics. You know, so we have to have the final say so on scrubbing it or not. You know, even if they even if they capture our guys doing the things that they do. Yeah. The the fact is they still own that video, and if we can't. On in the field, say, whoa, you can't, um, you gotta, you gotta scrub that. Right. They weren't willing to do that. It, it, those were the main sticking points that didn't work for us. Yeah. And I'm not gonna compromise my guys. But here's the biggest thing. Ready? They wanted, if there was nothing really happening, then they said, how about some drama? You know, can you add like, can your guys, you know, is there domestics going on? Are you guys, you guys argue a lot? I mean, who's the asshole? The group? Like and, poke the bear kind nobody. of bullshit. I, I, I'm like nobody. Everybody's professionals, and they all get along with each other. So you know that was the, that was the big thing. Yeah. Well, good for you, man. Good for standing up for your uh, for your morals. There, you you just muted yourself. I know, I just did because oh. I just yelled at my dog. Oh. <laughs> Don't be <laughs> yelling at most or something. He's farting. I'm like you. I'm Floating like, you there, biscuits. Dirty ass. <laughs> like, come on, man. He's Seriously, like, did you? He's have like, a like that's right Lefty here? on there, and you're not letting me talk to him. Come on, man. I, dude, he's walking right by me, and all of a sudden, I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> crop dust. you nasty individual!" You got crop dusted. <laughs> so I did. That little maggot crop dusted me. So Garcia, for our yeah. our new listeners, um, yeah, that may not be familiar with with you and and what you do with the uh, with corrections, and not necessarily just U.S. Yep. corrections, but you do it all over the world. Um, we do. It's, talk about what what it is that you do, your specialty, and and what you guys, uh, why you're so unique. Awesome. Yeah. So let me put it in English. The professional way is saying that we are a high risk correction, special operations mitigation unit. Say that three times real fast. I, I right? can't even say <laughs> correction, special <laughs> operations unit. <laughs> mitigation unit, yeah. man. Right. Yeah. So when, whenever you hear of a major riot or a uh, major hostage situation, um, nine times out of 10, we're going to be a team that they're going to call on standby or they're going to bring us in. And usually if it's within an eight to 12 hours from the time that it happens, we're probably the chances are we're probably already on our way because we can be anywhere in a continental United States, um, anywhere in a continental United States within within uh, 12 hours, and then anywhere globally, you know, within 36 hours. So you know, to be able to, to do that, you have to have a great support system, and and we have a great support system. So our unit is what they call C-SAU Correction Special Applications Unit. And uh, we don't use the word uh, like tactical group or uh, special operations group. I mean, um, our unit basically is special applications because it isn't just riots. We don't just mitigate riots. We don't just mitigate uh, major hostage situations, but we also mitigate and help in the transport of high risk inmates or high valued inmates. Mm -hmm. Or we'll go into we'll go to an agency and we'll provide um, either pre or post special operations preparedness or training as a result of them kind of. having a, a disastrous uh, operation. So the government sends us in for a couple of reasons. One, all of our equipment, our assets are all based to uh, support these types of, of agencies, okay? So imagine your local SWAT team showing up at a county level, like let's say, cause you're in, so you're 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 in Rutherford County, right? And in, in Rutherford County, you have, uh, um, hold on. <laughs> Is he wanting some attention? I, I, got a dog. I, I got a dog needing some attention here for a second. Oh, you're a good boy. 
You don't have to All mute right. yourself. Just put it on there. It'll be good good All content. Right. All right. Great. Leave my freaking shoe alone. And he, listen, I got these new Loa boots. And for some reason, he's like, got to put his nose in it. Like, it's brand new, right? Yeah. And and and, and I caught him chewing on it. I'm like, I'm going to beat your ass. New shoes I, have, you, like, I, some I, of the I, strongest smells, you know? You ever yeah, notice I, that? I, when I, you I, open up a box of new shoes, how strong it like, is? Whoa. It jumps out at you. So yeah. getting back to our our, our, our <laughs> mitigation stuff, so you don't throw me off. And so we'll either help an agency stand up or um, after it's over, we'll help an agency with, you know, kind of the, the after actions or what have you. But the government calls us in. So you're in Rutherford County. Your SWAT team is called out to the local prison or jail or what have you. How long is your SWAT team going to sit there, you know, while they negotiate this thing? And then number two, do they go in there on a regular basis? And the answer is no. So what would you rather bring in a team that, that all they do day in, day out is deal with jails and reinforce structure? And then here's the other thing. If your SWAT team is waiting on standby inside the wire, who the hell is protecting the local community in the event that something, you know, from a terrorist or, mm-hmm. you know, active shooter, who the heck is protecting those, your, 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 um, the community. Right. Exactly. Right. So that's why we are who we are. And, and all of us come from different departments. Um, you know, or we have a background in, in law enforcement. We've worked on tier one teams in, in, in our, in our capacity. And we're kind of gauged up there with, um, a very specialized government contractor, uh, tier one unit that has, you know, millions of dollars backing us. And so we launch out of South Carolina or we can launch out of California. So it just depends. You so know? you, you said you're backed by, nutshell, man. by a government entity or a private entity? Uh, we're a private uh, government contractor that only does government work. How's that for political correctness? <laughs> if if you got to be that way, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, if you want to know where our money comes from, I'll just say the government. <laughs> it's the government. I don't know because I don't own the freaking company, right? I just go where they tell me to go, dude. I got you. I got you. So how many of, of you are there? So uh, no bullshit. Just the, the numbers are for us, they are – confidential for a number of reasons right okay. so but we are we are small unit based tactics i'll tell you that there's under 100 of us <laughs> nationwide there's more than one yeah yeah it's like somebody asked me how old are you i said old enough to eat dessert before dinner old enough to go to a rated r movie without ha- without getting carded old enough to drink a beer in a store if i really want to without being carded <laughs> <laughs> well that gray in the beard tells a lot too there dude it's actually a style thing, the grain of beard. I I mean, you're, guys you're trying to take after me, man. Great. I am. You're take after but me. You're still older than me, so that's all that matters that's to me. That's right. I am the old man in this room, so respect <laughs> your elders, son. <laughs> so, that, so that's what we do. And and one of the other things that, that has made us and really brought us to the forefront is the dogs we use, man. We use these, don't adjust your hearing, black giant schnauzers. Do they come so, in any other color? Uh, you can get salt and pepper if you want to be political. Correct. Salt and pepper. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen a salt and pepper schnauzer, man? A, a, a mini one or a small one? I haven't. The little, the big ears, the yapping little dogs. Well, that's what the the giant uh, salt and pepper ones are kind of retarded. All right. Can I say that? They're retarded? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, re- <laughs> see that again, that you, political correct. Retarded is an actual word to describe someone who or something that just, you know, isn't right. It's not a derogatory term toward uh, exactly you know someone who is mentally challenged i guess challenge that's correct i, I mean, guess that's how you say it. it has a it has but, a place and in and you know used in the right context is perfectly fine so so anyways this these those little salt and pepper schnauzers are a little neurotic in some cases um a little short on their on their temper yeah. and uh honestly i've only seen one salt and pepper um and uh, really wasn't impressed with it. It was a, it was a giant schnauzer, but salt and pepper. And but all of our all of our schnauzers are all black, and they come from uh, a couple of different breeders that we don't really disclose who our breeders are. But I will tell you, they come from Eastern Bloc Europe. And they come some will come from the Bavarian Mountains, mm-hmm. and then others will come from the uh, Russian side. Okay, I'll say that. Okay, uh, and then the not illegal are, uh, to import them, huh? <laughs> No, of course not. Not yet. Not yet. Anyways, maybe Putin can get on there. I don't know. Putin's probably got hopefully, one. You know. Hopefully he doesn't. He doesn't put a bug up their ass and try to spy on us. <laughs> <laughs> so these these schnauzers, right? People always ask us, "Why did you go to the schnauzers?" 
And uh, so many years ago, um, a canine, uh, a police canine uh, went inside of a prison and they got sued. And you know why they got sued? Because the dogs fur went on some of these religious carpets of, of some of these um, individuals who use carpets to pray on mm -hmm. their prayer carpets, right? So they got yeah. sued. And as a result of that, you know, there was a lot of different um, protocols put in place. So guess what? Wait a minute. A prisoner about? sued um, a major police department, a major police department because they brought dogs in and the dogs shed on their blankets. It actually had, it actually had fur. They had fur and to live on. Somebody it actually, a judge actually caved heard in. that that case and gave in, and and, and they caved won. in, and they won. Yeah, the, yeah. Actually, it didn't even it didn't even make it that far. The the agency, and it's a major agency, said no more dogs coming in. I mean, it was it was getting on to, uh, it was starting to grow. But so as what a if result, you? <laughs> never mind. I was gonna go to so what if you uh, ate bacon that morning and you went and you touched their blanket? Oh, that would have been funnier. Never hell, mind. Right. Never mind. Yeah. So, anyways. Our dogs are hypoallergenic, but do you know why they're hypo hypoaller hypoallergenic? Hair? Yep, it's because they have hair, not fur. You didn't know that, did you? I did not know. So that. if you so if you look at dogs, right? So tell us the difference say, between no, hair and fur. fur. People will say that's BS. Uh, fur is fur; it's just a different level. Well, actually, that's not fur true. is hair. It, it, Hair and fur. So everybody's going to shed no matter what. You shed. I mean, you have hair that comes out of your beard, your hair, right? Yeah. So it's just – but these dogs have hair. Poodles have hair. Um, Malinois, shepherds, your Cujo down there has fur. Because when they're walking, <laughs> you can just almost see that fur falling off. I mean, if you want a winter coat, just go in your car, let them be in there for a half day, and you can go in there and start rolling around. You'll have fur all over. You know, that's your new fur coat. Oh, that's ridiculous. Coat. Yeah, just vacuum and they get a How many times do you coat? vacuum that, your dog? How often? Every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Especially during the, the summer. Uh, especially during the summer right now, yeah. She's, she's a shedder. You ever start eating dinner and you go, what the hell? And you're pulling this little hair out of your mouth? No, thank God. Bit. No, I keep I keep it clean. <laughs> Because so uh, so that don't happen. Yeah, I have a friend who had it who has a Labrador. And when he shakes that little Labrador shakes oh. inside, you can see that hair. Yeah, I mean that fur just, just and go it, everywhere. And one day we were we were having dinner and I and then we were eating and I, I I chewed on something and I started pulling out and I said, "What the hell?" And one of those Labrador hairs or furs, you know, a piece of his fur came off. I'm like, yeah. "This is ridiculous." So what so is the actual? What's the push. scientific difference between hair and fur? Do you know? It's something to do with the follicles. And, um, you know, how they, uh, I don't know, I'm going to start lying now, but there's a vet told me it's fur versus hair and fur. When a dog goes into like a process where he gets hot, um, you know, he starts shedding more and a dog with, with hair, I guess, doesn't shed as much for, I guess their body naturally does it. Some kind of cooling thing, but you can look it up. All right. And so I'm looking it up right now because I'm curious and I want, I want our listeners to know. Hair uh, versus fur. What, uh, let's see what it says there. Is hair defined? All right, I just want the answer. I went to scientificamerica.com. Let's go to a different one here because they're not just giving me. Hair is an outgrowth of protein found only on mammals. The primary growth of hair fiber is keratin. Keratins are proteins, i.e. polymers, amino acids. It, pro exactly. it projects from the epidermis through... Uh, though it grows from hair follicles deep in the dermis. The term fur refers to the body hair of non-human mammals, also known as the P-E-L-A-G-E, -E, uh, like the term plumage in birds. Animals without fur may be referred to as hairless or naked at certain stages of life. Hair is absent in some of the species. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a difference, but I don't. I didn't really get what it is there. But anyway, all right, continue. Usually, a dog with fur, I mean, with hair, doesn't really smell as bad as with a dog with fur. You ever notice that? Mm -hmm. Next time, check, check a dog out. Like if you smell a if you if you smell a poodle, smell a poodle. Yeah, it kind of smells like a dog. But if you smell a shepherd or Mally or your dog there in the summertime, man, you can smell them. Oh you know yeah, I mean? she she stinks. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> she stinks. Okay, that's my that's the scientific Ours. thing research for us all right so there was our our educational portion of the show there we learned the difference between fur and hair yep now i want to ask you um 
you've been all over the world and and you've been to some some really i guess unique places in prison systems there's okay. again talking talking about your favorite network netflix they've got this thing called like the world's toughest prisons or something like that bullshit yeah right. yeah this dude uh, you know apparently goes around and stays yep stays in them and, and blah 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 but yep. what's uh what is the i don't know how, how i want to word it what's the the toughest prison that you've encountered ukraine with, in the ukraine ukraine okay now, talk about that yeah i went to a prison in ukraine and this is a dozen years ago and um I went to a prison in the Ukraine, and honestly, if you ever watched the movies where you kind of have that little dripping sound opening a, a, a big steel door, and uh, you're walking down what looks like uh, maybe light, a single light bulb every 20 feet, that was this prison, this maximum security prison looked like when I was in the Ukraine. I mean, it was dead winter, right? And it was colder than hell. And you're, you're walking, and, and as I'm going to their maximum security unit, I'm asking myself, is that a corrections officer or is that a prisoner? And <laughs> you can oh, tell no, the that's, difference. <laughs> that's a prisoner controlling the doors. What the hell? And so if, you know, these the, the prison, and I say it's tough, right, for me, mm-hmm. is that you're, you're relying on your family to bring food, number one, or your, the food that I see, it's called a like goulash. It's like a goulash there, right, mm-hmm. is so flippant and it, you might as well take a tire and put it in hot water, <laughs> throw in a cabbage or two and a potato. Throw some fur in there. Around. Yeah. I mean, they're using left – they get leftover bones and and meat that the butchers don't use. That gets sent to the prison, and that's what they put in their stew, and you have almost the same thing. And they love their bread, man. Give me some bread, potato bread, thick as hell. And when you put it down, it goes – I mean, literally. So <laughs> – Maybe that's what they should call it, Kloomp. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that for me was like the toughest prison. I mean, inmates are inmates, right? And, and, and when people say, this is the toughest prison in the world, I'll do it. I'll take you to L.A. County. We'll go into L.A. County where you have the Bloods and the Crips, and those boys will get you open just as quick as, a, as when we were in Argentina, as an, as an Argentinian prison, as, as those inmates. Nobody does anything more violent. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about Brazil. Brazil will chop your head off. Inmates will chop your head off in Brazil. And, dude, I've got some video that I could show you and, and, and oh your viewers. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, wow. I got some video. I have some pictures I could show you. Let me just send you a little sample so you know what I'm talking about. And this yeah, is dude. shit you're not going to – this is stuff that you're not going to find on flipping uh, on the internet. Or internet. Yeah. yeah. Let me just get, get an import here really quickly. Go to my imports. But So Brazil, you would say, is probably like – the it, most violent, it, would you say? I would say, as a group, as as a as a in, in, as an entire group, it's violent because the accountability is really not there. Yeah. Un, unlike the United States, if you want to talk about violence, I think the most violent prison system in the world is the United States. Oh, okay. I know, and, and and people will say, well, what about the riots in, in uh, Brazil, the riots that they have in the in the UK? Um, I say that the violence in the United States is every 90 seconds there's a corrections officer in the United States being assaulted, seriously injured, and or killed. That's violent, dude. We have okay? the high, don't we have the highest prison population in the world? 2.3 million. 2.3 million. In, incarcerated in the United States right now. 2.3 million. Oh my right? gosh. Yeah. No other, no other, other country in the world. So I was watching this thing on, um, I guess it was Netflix. It was another prison thing, and just in Georgia, the what's the the big one there in Georgia prison system? Okay, so it's like one of the biggest mean, in the country. You mean um, at, at uh, DeKalb County, or you're talking about like a state prison? State prison, in California is the largest largest state prison in. Well, in this United, one's in, in Georgia. States. I can't remember where it was, um, but anyway, it's like thirty eight thousand. Uh, people they have moving through that system like every month i think it is that could you know for a prison system all right so it's not like the hardcore stuff it's just you're you know just a yeah so if you want to know as far i'm going to turn it off because this is moving so slow now yeah um prison system wise right 
in the United States. When you say processing, Houston, L.A. County probably process, I don't know, 100,000 inmates a year. 100,000 inmates going through the booking mm -hmm. a year. You can do the numbers on that. Houston, which is which is uh, Tarrant County, um, huge, man. I'm or sorry, it's, it's Harris County um, yeah. in Houston. Mm -hmm. They probably do 100,000. You know, it used to be Cook County used to be the, the, the big boy, the big jail. Um, Rikers Island used to be the big jail, and now they're not. You know, they're they're probably maybe number five or number six in the country as far as jail is concerned. Yeah. If you talk about a state prison, California's probably got to do, I don't know, three four hundred thousand a year processing through processing. Just processing. Not, yeah. Not not incarcerated. We're talking about you're going into a night into a hotel for the night or fi uh, finishing your sentence for six months or what have you, and they're processing those kinds of numbers, right? And so a jail that will process. You know, a hundred thousand people in a year. You got to remember that's drunk drivers getting arrested. You know, the most violent places are county jails, not the prisons. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that because they don't really understand. It's because in the prison system they have what they call the, um, you know, uh, before you go to general general population or before you get get assigned to whatever jail you're going to go to, you go to a classification jail. And the classification jail is they send everybody there, and everybody kind of has individual cells, and that's where they learn. You know, if you're a psycho, if you're what your charges are, how many times you've been in prison or what have you. And 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 that's what the the state prison systems deal with. In the jails, we don't have that that luxury. Jails, they take everybody off the streets and then you're gonna have to deal with it as quickly as possible because they're in they're in a general population. And that's why you have the violent system within the US jail system, because it's anybody coming in, a psycho and a serial murderer all in the same cell. Yeah. You know, that 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 sucks. So, I think it's Gwinnett County is is what it was in in, in Atlanta or yeah, in Georgia. So, yeah, Gwinnett County is just outside uh, DeKalb County, and uh, Gwinnett County is a pretty progressive jail, man. I mean, a really progressive jail run by um uh, uh, run by the sheriff's office. Um, I know I know their their chief over there. Good people, man. I mean, they are very professional. Um, but it's not DeKalb County. Please don't go to De don't get arrested. Don't, <laughs> don't go to DeKalb. Don't go there. Huh? If you go You're going to get arrested. Go to Gwinnett County because it's like the Hilton over there. It's <laughs> nice. Just saying, dude. So um, that being said, you know, as far as, as as prisons go, nicest prisons that you've seen, cleanest, be best run, uh, America or overseas. Uh, well, I would say uh, it, that's kind of hard because in the U.S., you realize we have over four thousand jails in the united states over four thousand dude jails right jails and and prisons in the united states over three thousand jails alone that's not the state system that that that's huge and i've i've walked into taj mahal's and i've walked into places going i wouldn't let my worst enemy's mother be uh, get arrested and stay here overnight holy crap right one of our violent prisons used to be a place called Angola in Louisiana. You ever hear of that place? Angola. It's where, it's, where, it's where they used to have the inmate cowboy rodeos. Yeah, where, I've heard of they, that. Yeah, That's right. Warden Burl Kane used to be the warden. Didn't he paint the in, walls pink and all this kind of stuff? That, no, that's going to be um, Joe Arpaio in, in Arizona with Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Oh, okay, okay. So Burl Kane had the rodeo, the famous rodeo for, for, for inmates. And uh, I guess the prize was... You, um, that they could they could reduce your sentence and get out. I mean, it's really that's a, that makes for another story about the different jails and prisons I've been to. Yeah, that um, are kind of foobarred up, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, our dogs are really special and unique, right? Because they're the only special operation canines that travel throughout the United States and go in and out of different jails. It's because they're, they're how they're trained, and that's really the big thing, right? And that's what, but that's what, that's what amazes people is that a they're about 98, 99 percent bark free. Number one, and number two, when they when they when they're going to bite, they don't indicate; they just go on a simple command and they shoot like a like a rocket. Number three, they're primarily trained to bite in the crotch, behind the knee, or the Achilles. That's it. That's take their, down that's, spots. Yeah. Uh, that's that's their, their their three primary takedown spots. And people ask, well, why? Because if imagine if I'm if I'm inmates will use blankets or whatever and they wrap their arms up. So they're waiting for the dog. They know the routine. Mm -hmm. So why mm -hmm. send a dog um, to a guy that has a blanket already? It's like an arm, a, a padded arm. And so he, with the other hand, he can stab the dog. So I send my dog uh, over ten years ago. There were some friends of mine in the in in the the, the a special unit that were practicing or training how to guide dogs with lasers. 
And um, I took that concept when I learned about it and asked about it, and I used what they call the SE532 green laser. And it's a bright, it was the brightest green laser at the time, and I was using that to guide my dogs to bite. Hmm. And um, so when we send our dogs down range, people say, well, why do you do that? I say, well, here, here, here's, a, here's an example. So we would, I would use a maybe eight, 10, 12 decoys, and I'd say, I'm going to send my dog now to bite. And, and I say, which one do you want me to bite? Have him bite. And I'll say, that guy right there. I'll say, okay, you send your canine and ha have your canine go. Nobody move. Everybody stand right there and uh, send your canine. And the, the canine would bite the first person that it came to, the first decoy. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. it would be my turn. They'd say, we want you to show us how your dog's going to bite that decoy. Well, that's an easy day. So I would take my light. So the dog knows exactly the direction, kind of the general area. And then I take a green, a green laser and I'd point it on the individual and I'd send my dog. And, 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 you know, you've seen the demonstrations, the dogs oh, yeah. know exactly where that green laser is at. Right. And so we mastered that. It's been a decade now. They've come from the UK. They come from France. They've come from Argentina to train with us and to see how our dogs do things because our dogs train very specific mission essential for, for our job and our business in, in corrections, man. Yeah. And, and like really you said earlier, your dogs come from different countries and yep and you've made this statement before is that you're not a trainer you don't train the dogs you've got no. you've got trainers that that do that are they trained in the united states or are they trained overseas before they come here so their training takes almost two and a half years and um I, i've got a dog drinking water right next to me so i apologize if there's background noise but they need a drink so He's one of them it's hot one of them getting ready to travel so i need to hydrate his ass up before he gets in a there you gets go. A, in the vehicle but um, our dogs train for almost two and a half years, and about six months of their training, two months of it spent in Canada, and four months is spent back in Europe, and then they and then they come back over here. But we have different specialists, right? And people will say, well, why can't one trainer handle it? Because what people don't realize is that our dogs, we have a very unique specification. So we'll send our dog to like what they call Schutzen, a little bit of Schutzen, a little bit of ring sport, cadaver. Um, tracking, narcotics, or, or EOD, uh, apprehension work, and then we send our dog to some other things that I don't discuss, um, but they're, they're classified where they go to. And at the end of the day, our dogs come back two and a half years later, so they'll go away for eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, and then they'll come to me for four weeks for what we call beta testing. So whatever they just learned, they come back, I can play, and I, and, and I, and I reinforce what the trainers um, have taught them, but in a working environment. And right. if it's not working, I tell the trainer, hey, the freaking dog's not working. I want to punch this dog in the face right now. Because he's, he's just thirsty. You leave him alone. <laughs> this dog is like drinking and is lapping it up. It reminds me of Oshi. Me. That's how Oshi drink his water. Yeah. Big old lap. Founded in 2012, IWIUS is the USA-based subsidiary of Israel Weapon Industries Limited of Ramat Hasharon, Israel. The IWIUS line of products includes the Tavor X95, the Uzi Pro pistol and SMG, the Galil Ace line of firearms, and the belt-fed Negev line of light machine guns. IWI's mission is to bring the highest quality firearms with real world proven reliability to the U.S. commercial and law enforcement market. IWI US are proud sponsors of the Talking Lead AK Corner and the Lead Head Brigade. Check us out at www.iwi.us and on social media under IWI US. As so, he, as he, go ahead. so the, and it's not cheap. These dogs aren't cheap. Um, no man. You know, after you get the training and everything, you know, I mean, you're looking at you know six figures that you've got into these dogs. Easy day. Yep. Easy day. Yeah. I mean, just the the grooming bill alone. Um, these guys, these dogs are groomed on a weekly basis. Um, I've learned how to cut them, by the way, so I, I can give you a mean schnauzer. <laughs> now cut schnauzer cut if I want it. Which people used to joke me years ago. They go, "Your dogs look so stupid when you cut off all the hair." Okay, that's nice. <laughs> um, and then you just leave their beard on. I said, okay. Yeah. And I go, that doesn't make sense to me. I go, well, it's not supposed to. It makes sense to me, right? Yeah. So 10 years ago, I cut my dogs down, Max. I cut him down because he was – Max was hit with a, with a razor blade. An inmate had a, had a, um, had a uh, shank and um, sliced Max across the back. And so I didn't even know that. It was, it was uh, probably about 10 or 11 o'clock. We got, we got into the truck. And I petted him. I go, what the heck? Your, your back is so stiff. What the hell? There's something on your back. And I didn't realize this dog had been cut, man. He had six stitches we had to get in him. And because um, his yeah. hair was long. 
Yeah, you had the hair been short, tell. I could have seen it, right? I could right. have seen it. So we we've cut the dog at what they call a five reverse. So it's almost skin, just a you know really tight cut. And from that point on, and it was also easier when inmates would throw crap at us. I mean, I'm talking physical, literal Doo-doo. crap. Yeah. yeah, feces, feces. out of their body. Uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Ask anything, anything that that they can throw at our dogs, right? Then I want to make sure that we can wipe it off and get that crap off because that's like mercy, man. Carries all that crap. Yeah. So now you're using yeah. vest on on your dogs now, right? These days we are now. Yeah. Before yeah. Um, we used to not really use vest years ago. I mean, protective vest. Um, now we use um, we use a vest. I guess about uh, eight years ago, nine years ago, um, we used a a standard vest out there. And what happened was Max was slammed up against a bed, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a buckle. Um, it was a uh, a buckle that it was in between him that was on his vest. And then when he when the inmate slung him against the uh, a bed, that buckle went into the bed and went into the, and cracked his rib. Oh yeah. So, you know, the that was really one of the mitigating reasons why I went back and I said, hey, whatever we do, what the vet told me, whatever we do now. Let's cut off all the metal off the dogs. Plastic and metal came off the dogs. So we developed a new vest, and they call it the Mech 9 system, the Mission Essential uh, um, vest that I came up with. And it was just by Max obviously getting his ass pretty beat pretty hard. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the equipment that was on them uh, pretty much uh, hurt him, right, the hardware. And the other thing that happened was it was kind of an embarrassing thing. I don't really talk about it very much. But one time we sent Max, and you remember how big Max is? He's a really, he was a really tall dog, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We sent them through a barricade, and the way that the inmates had the 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 broom handles, the mops, and everything else, Max is one of his one of his grab handles got caught in it. So as he's going through, man, mm. it, get, it gets caught on on the grab handle, and he guess what? Clo- it almost clotheslined him, right? Yeah. Coming back, and, and I learned at after that operation and streamline the vest. Streamline the vest. Get rid of everything. So I took, guess what? Duct tape. And I took I, I, I taped everything down before every operation. And our quartermaster at the time said, Hey, you know, I can I can um, I can make something that we can just tuck it in. I'll sew something on, we can tuck it in. And I was like, Born was our special operations vest that we've never taken pictures until recently. We started making small disclosure, but there's a competition I'm getting ready to get involved in. And we're going to talk about that. The vest. Yeah. Yep. They said they saw the vest and they said, hey, we want to highlight that. We want to highlight your badass truck, by the way, and the collars. And uh, they, then they started asking me, why don't you use metal on the collars? Isn't it stronger? I said, no, I'm using old physics to put a collar on. I don't want any kind of metal on my dog, period. Because if the metal breaks, your dog is dead anyways. Yeah. So, you know, we want or it could be used adver- adversely against them, like you said, thrown up yep, against the wall. Absolutely. Yeah. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah. Yep. So our, our vest is about to be highlighted to millions of people, man. And it's going um, on the market. It's going to go on the market, dude. Better get ready. Get ready for yep. that. That's we're cool, working, man. We're working with a good manufacturer that's going to be able to, to help us on that part. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the that coming up here. But first, I want to talk about um, you know, some of the other things that you guys are involved with. Uh, you know, We talked about the the documentary. Hopefully, that's still going to come through maybe on another network, hopefully. It is. Yep. And, um, and then magazines. You've been featured in some magazines here recently, too. Uh, talk about yeah. that. Uh, Tactical Life magazine put us on, on their uh, their cover. We have um, another major magazine. I, I don't know, not sure if I can disclose it, but I can assure you this: uh, it's bigger than Tactical Life magazine that we're going to be on their cover, and okay. it's about the it's about the KSG and the shotgun. Okay. So um, we're talking on on that article. We're going to be talking about how we de- how we deploy our the guns. RDB and the KSG. No, just the KSG and um, and our our. Our dogs. Okay. The KSG and the dogs. So, yeah. And so we're going to talk about home defense, how we use our dogs in a home defense uh, aspect, you know, off duty. If I had to deploy a dog and, and you know, what, what weapon would I use? I'd probably use the KS7. Uh, I'd use the K9. <laughs> and I, mean. I got the K9. I would hey, just I use the K9. I never about that, man. They match. K9, right? KSG. K7. And, you know, K9. You got to have a K9 with your KSG or your KS7. Right. Goodness gracious, man. Boom. There it is. You can I use like it. I like it. Free you, to you. You, you. you discovered it for me, man. Free free for I, you to use. <laughs> that's why I'm running the Keltec because they have the KSG and the KS7 and I have a K9. There you a go. lot of Ks there, brother. A lot of Ks and not, numbers. 
So let's <laughs> since we're talking about it now, let's talk about the you know your arsenal that you guys are using your um, your your kit and your gear. So yeah, right that if people who listen to the show before they know that you guys are heavily into the uh, the KSGs. We are uh, the RDBs and uh, use Glocks now for your pistols. We do. Yep. You guys are rocking yep. the Glocks. And um, have you gotten into the KS sevens? Are you starting to we use are. those now? Yeah, we're using we're using those we're using those a lot. And and for that's kind of a different um, mission for us. And uh, so people that asked us, and I'll give your 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 listeners a little bit of a why we went to the KSGs because, you know, at one time people used to used to say when the KSGs first came out or or Keltec, it's like isn't that the George Zimmerman gun? Isn't that the company that made that George Zimmerman gun? It's like you know everything's like a throwaway gun. I, I haven't used any of those other guns, but I will tell you this: um, Mr. Keldren is an innovator, dude. The guy is an innovator. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, and the way that he understands guns and, and designs guns i mean it gave me a whole new perspective and when i saw the ksg when it came out the first year didn't really want to touch it because i know like with any new gun mm -hmm. you're gonna before it goes in, into the real full production you're gonna have issues sure. right however what was ticking off in my head was the specifications the specifications were 18.5 inch barrel so yeah so the the specs are really what caught your Cut your eyes because of the specialty yeah. that you guys do, you need something more compact, um, but still packed. I mean, punch. I, exactly. I mean, think about it, dude. Your standard shotgun, whether it's a Mossberg uh, 590 or it's an 870 Remington, they're they're great shotguns, man. They're the workhorse. I mean, our military ha have used those in combat, etc. Right, and we use them in law enforcement. We still use them in law enforcement. But the problem that you're dealing with for us, right? The only issue that we have is. We, we deal with what they call micro unit tactics. So we go in, whether we're solo operators, micro units, which is two of us, or we do what they call a CBU, a corrections battle unit, four of us, or we're going to use a train. And that's anywhere between six and then the number can keep running up to 12, 24 guys, whatever. So the bottom line is we'll go into a situation where, where it's four against 250 or 300. That's a lot of ammo that I got to send down range, okay? And again, I'm not going to be killing all these people and shooting all these people, you know, um, necessarily. And so when I saw the KSG, I was like, man, the specification of 18.5 inch barrel, I get it. But what I loved about it was a dual magazine and the 26.1 inch magic number, one inch smaller than an MP5. And uh, then I said, OK, on the dual magazines, can I load ammo one, you know, some ammo on one magazine tube and put another set of ammo on another magazine tube? And they were like, sure. And you could change it on a fly. I said, well, you got to impress me and show me this. So I went to uh, Caltech. I, I flew down there and I had a what was going to be a 30 minute meeting turned out to be like a three hour meeting with the owners. And I saw it. And, and at the time, Caltech was only like, I don't know, 5,000 back order or something like that on that KSG because they weren't even really concentrating on it. Mm -hmm. Today, they're over 100,000 back order, dude. Yeah, and everybody is it, uh, today. I mean, like you said, it, it's the fastest adopted new shotgun. Guns. It's the fastest adopted shotgun right now in law enforcement. I mean, people are going to it very quickly because where can you get 14 plus one? Where can you change, go into a room, and maybe I need a, a breaching round and then switch that magazine? You know, and go to a direct action round. I mean, literally. And you can see, I you've seen me operate a, that shotgun like it's a semi-auto, right? Oh yeah. Really, you know, really yeah. smoothly, right? And so that is really the big uh, premise, the big reasons why we switched from the 590s, the 870s, and went to the KSG. It had nothing to do with this is better or that's better. And I, I, I laugh at people, okay, when I hear that. Oh, the the Glock is a better gun, or this is a, or the Sig's a better gun. For me, it's all about the mission, okay? What is your mission? I need a gun, so I need a gun that deals with our environment. Our, what's our environment? Our environment's pretty sterile. Maybe it can get humid humid on the inside. I drop the gun, so I'm, I'm going to go against concrete or steel. So I want a gun that's going to be able to, to survive that if I drop it or what have you. And so I, I, I need a, a clean gun. So that's why we went with a Glock. It's a tough little tank, right? Other other units have different specifications out in the jungle, in the water, in the beach, or sure. whatever. Great, have a nice day. The KSG met our specification: compact, size, capacity, um, and then the the user friendliness. And so the other thing about it that we liked about it is that it had a the select lever on the KSG. If I put it in the middle, that's your extra safety. So if there was no round in the chamber and my weapon was on on, um, I, I put so understand this. If my shotgun does not have a round in a chamber and I put the safety on and I go ahead and put the select lever in neutral, 
an individual, if they know how to operate the KSG or somewhat, if they rack it, they think in their head, right, um, I've, I've got a round racked. Mm -hmm. And so they pull the trigger because they take it off safety. That, that select lever being in the middle between the two magazine tubes does not allow – you know, does not engage around going into the uh, the chamber. So for me, that was like a secondary safety that was inadvertently built into this KSG, so it made it user friendly and it added another level of safety that I really liked. So, yeah. and our, our and the bullpup, the bullpup design again. You know, bull, talking the, about the compactness, you're still getting the 18 and a half inch barrel, but you're getting it in that bullpup design, which in your environment you really you know you need things tight quarters, you know, in close. Yeah. Absolutely, and and that and that and that's really important, right? So I developed the combat program for the KSG for the military, for law enforcement agencies. I mean, I just came back from overseas not too long ago, and I was working with a Secret Service unit that purchased for the entire unit the KSGs. I mean, it is a great weapon that honestly is probably one of the the best breakthroughs for that that type of model of gun, the mm -hmm. KSGs. And the bullpup system is something that's catching on in the United States really very good. It's getting a good following on it. And I don't you're never gonna get away from the AR. That's the American bread and butter weapon. Oh yeah. But the absolutely. but the bull but, but the bullpup platform is a great platform. But now. like you said, mission specific. You know, what what does your exactly. mission call for? And what's your mission? Right. You know, it's just it's just another option that's out there that uh, people can utilize for, you know, whatever. Hunting. You know, again, the the bullpup, small, compact, everything's in there close. You don't have a lot of things dangling out to get caught on branches yep. and trees and weeds and, you know, stuff like that. And then <laughs> I'm still getting the 17-inch 17, you know, 17 barrel, uh, and it's still yep. shorter, you know, than any than any of the ARs, you know, and even shorter than some of the pistol ARs, you know, the 11-and-a-half-inch and and yeah. barrels. Yeah, I mean, you you can get in there and you can engage your you, with the RDBs. You can get in there and contact, you know, go into CQB and then step outside and go into almost a a six hundred yard shot, a four hundred yard shot, man. You know, if you have the the seventeen point five inch barrel, I mean, you, you're pushing it, but you, you're 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 able to do that, right? Yeah. So absolutely. That, yeah, I mean, you're able to do thing. everything an AR is able to do with the with the Plus RDB. Plus, everything's sexier with a dog. If you've got a, if you've got a, <laughs> if you Schauser, throw a dog in the mix, I don't care what gun you have. It's sexy. Nobody's looking at your gun anyway, are they? They're looking at your dog. <laughs> so, Ab absolutely, man. Talk about some of the other uh, uh, kit that you guys uh, operate with. Some of your, so, some of your more um, uh, crucial kit, like your helmets and yeah. Your so vest. we're using the ops core. We use the ops core ballistic helmets. Uh, we use the uh, we use their bumper helmets as well. We run the first spear get kit. Love the first spear stuff, dude. Um, you know, I don't know if you know that, like their tube sidings. I mean, we were using that seven. I years would have ago if you'd ever sent me that vest you're supposed to, but dude, <laughs> I take full responsibility for forgetting that because I need somebody to hold my hand to walk me through it as I go through our our, our our armory to pull things up. But yeah, I mean, actually, good thing you after a phone call you have to you have to remind me, send me a text, and I can probably get one out to you asap. Oh, okay. Now that we have now that we have a surplus of stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wink, well, wink. <laughs> well, if you got a surplus, then yeah, let's talk. <laughs> you just stopped by my yeah, house on your way out to uh, California. <laughs> yeah, man. So it, it's the we we use that we use like Loa boots or the Solomon boots. We run now. Uh, we used to run Cry uniforms, and we no longer run the Cry uniforms. And uh, we found, you know, I love Cry. It's a great thing. Sure. Um, but we but I'm finding that you order one set and they don't quite fit like the they're not you consistent. Order another set like. Yeah, not consistent. I'm not sure if they're, if they're it's, it's because it's such a big demand or what. But you know who's rocking it right now, man? UF Pro. It's not a European uniform. Okay. It it it's a it's a um, European company out of Slovenia, and they're they're producing a lot of this. They're producing for a lot of the special operations units in Europe right now. I didn't realize that. Hmm. And uh, hmm. so it's called UF Pro, and they're really. I mean, I've talked to the owners. Um, they talk. Very good English. Um, I understand why now the why now a lot of guys in the U.S. A, a lot of tier one guys are starting to use the UF Pro. They're calling them the Cry Killers because have they got their Cry own. Kind of, have they got their own camo? They do. Yeah, you know, they're, I think that's running. how I've heard of them. Uh, we had Prime One camo on uh, last year, year before, a couple of years ago. Uh, U.S. company. Yep. Um, female design uh, camo and whatnot, and they they were having this contest for camos all around the world, and I think that's right. where I heard. I think it was like she had to go up against them uh, on one of the 
the competitions. But well, these guys have a, a really good. Um, they have a really. I'll send it to you right now. Hopefully. Yeah. Make sure that that's the right one you're looking at. Yep, you have pro tactical gear. Yep, and I'm telling you what, the quality, the craftsmanship of their uniform is really good. I ordered a pair seven months ago, eight months ago. I just got some brand new pairs because they sent it to us, right? Because they know I'm going to be on this competition. So they said, hey, would you try some of this other stuff out? So yeah, I need to do a reorder on some kit, and they sent it to me. Dude, fits the same way, just as consistent and clean, and that's what I really like about it, right? Nice. But the design and, and where they put the, the, the soffits and where they put the stretch points, I mean, it makes a lot of sense you know, for their stuff. Now, are so, they, and the are they, they European sizes? Because I've I've noticed they, that European clothes clothes fit different than American, you know, slightly, size. Yeah, slightly, uh, slightly tighter, slightly smaller. Yeah. Um, I've been, I I use a thirty four. So you when you give them their your measurements, they they take account for the American. You just go go through the conversion, and uh, you'll enjoy that. But I mean, a thirty four. I don't know what it is in, in the European size, but yeah. Um, I I have a thirty four waist. You're fat. And I, and I'm not I'm not exaggerating that thirty four and I'm thirty two. I got going a thirty down. I had a thirty four, but I'm down to thirty two now. Are you seriously gone to thirty two? Yeah. Were you putting a finger down your throat or something or what? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, everything else still fits the same. It's just I've uh, No, it's good, man. Got down yeah, to I hope to be down to a thirty two probably by the end of fall. You know, I'm I'm dropping and keeping it tight now. Well you're doing you're doing some uh some hellacious you know, physical training as well. You know, you make some posts on social media there with uh, yep. with you training with the pups, and I mean, you got you got a pretty um, rigorous regime. Talk about that. Yeah. So usually my day gets started about uh, three forty five in the morning, and uh, I have a little quiet time first with the Lord, and then I go. Uh, I find myself in the gym probably about four forty five, uh, and I'm in there for myself for about an hour, and the dog's always next to me, and people say, well. You know, what's the sense of you bringing a dog with you? But what they don't realize is my dog is constantly training. So when I put my dog next to me and he hears the clanking of the weights, he sees people moving or or doing whatever. I put him next to the machines. It's kind of constantly training the dog for the that environment, you know, that that noises don't bother him. But it also I also switched up by putting him in a sit down, a sit position, a down position or a stand position for maybe two sets. He has, he can't move. Mm -hmm. And then I'll move him around to the other side of the bench or what have you. So I use it as a little training. And then what I do is after I'm done my set, I'll put him on a training um, where I'll take step up boxes or, or make a five foot wall and I'll put him in a down position and have him jump up and I'll give him, you know, three sets of tens. That will smoke any dog, right? And then I add resistance bands for his bite work. Um, and then I, I start, you know, I do a lot of little things. And so people have asked me, hey, why don't you start your own YouTube training? And I tell people, dude, I'm not a trainer, man. <laughs> what I do is like I'm a coach, right? Yeah. And my partner is my four-legged badass dog, Giant Schnauzer. And so I think legs for me, what what will help him with his legs and explosiveness? And I kind of, you know, have, have, have over the years – created a binder that I can tell you every workout that we run with our dogs. And that's why when people, you've seen our dogs just touching them, it's like these guys are muscular animals, dude. Oh man, they're solid. I it's think like, so. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're absolutely solid. So, uh, all this training and everything that you're doing is, is really going to be paying off with what you've got coming up, which we're going to talk about now. And we can, oh we can actually talk about it now. Uh, yep. we were actually recording yesterday and we had to stop because you had a meeting uh, for this, we did. We yep. picked we picked it back up. I mean, we're so good at our editing; it was seamless. Our our listeners didn't even know; they wouldn't have known if I didn't tell them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, talk about um, this this new uh, endeavor, this new opportunity that you guys are going to be involved with, you and the pup. Yes. So um, we were invited uh, this year to participate in um, a little show called America's Top Dog. Top and, Dog. Um, Top Dog. They they had a season uh, that just premiered this past year, and um, you know we weren't. I, I didn't have the time to do it. You know, th for, from season one, and uh, so we were invited to, to participate in season two. Thousands, and I mean thousands of, of handlers were being vetted. Yeah, this is on A and E. A and E. The A and E network for you lead heads that aren't familiar with that, but they're they did a season one, and uh, you, this is season two. This is going to be season. This two. is going to be. They're recording for season two and then season three as well. 
Okay. So we're going to be in. We're. I understand that we're going to be on season two. Gotcha. So we're filming it. We're, we're the competition starts in about a week and a half, and I'm headed to L.A. Man. That's cool. And that's where you're headed right now. Yep. And so uh, last year they didn't. They had um, a I guess a canine association group help come up with the obstacles and things like that. Well, this year they had um, special operations and law enforcement get involved. So it makes last season's competition look like romper room compared to what they're <laughs> asking the guys to do this year, right? Because I saw some of the stuff that they're going to be doing. Like you know, I don't know. I don't know how much I can get into detail, but yeah, I'll just say. Zip lining and rappelling with your dog is not an easy thing to do when you when you're on for time, dude. You know, and breaking down doors and you know dogs going to a ascent mode. I mean, it's going to be crazy, crazy. So for those who aren't I familiar, mean, uh, America's top dog brings together top canine cops and civilian dogs alongside their handlers as they compete nose to nose on the ultimate canine obstacle course. The series is hosted by some Kurt guy alongside expert trainer Nick White. And sideline reporting Jamie Little. So I'm going to have to watch this. I've not watched this series yet, so I'm going to get on and, and check this out. It sounds pretty fucking awesome, dude. It is, dude. I mean, it. you know, last year's competition is, um, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from the guys who did it. If you don't, you know, if you do something for the first time, it's always going to be tough, especially sure. if you don't really get time. This year, they're telling everybody that the eliminations will go by fast. It's going to be pretty brutal. Um you know, so it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting, dude. Now I, I'm excited about it, and you know they said, you know, you know they've given us a whole list of things to make sure your dog is able to do, from dock diving to not afraid of heights to, um, you know, the different. I mean, different, you're like check, 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 check. I'm like, like you're check, like, check, 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 check. You're like I fucking fast rappel out of helicopters with my dogs. <laughs> Yeah, on a regular basis, and I don't know how many how many of these other guys will do that or can do that in, in that time, kind of time frame. So, what kind of um, what kind of what breed of dogs can we expect to see? The majority of dogs you're going to see there are Mallies and Shepherds. Those are the police on the police side. Yeah. Um, on the civilian side, you'll probably see everything from a Jack Russell to um, I don't know um, a Yorkie or whatever. I mean, if the dog is some kind, they're going to have dog, little dogs on there, little bitty. They little, had what they had a little dog last year, right? Yappers. And that little thing was pretty freaking agile, but it struggled on the on the walls and it struggled on the I guess the bite work. And the good thing about the civilian dogs that that kind of challenge, I guess, guys who are uh, in in the 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 law enforcement side is that everybody has to understand that dogs are trained for a mission, right? So you know, you see a service dog or an agility dog that does does one thing that's really good in this competition. Is really set up that I don't care if you're if you're strong in one area, you're going to go into a next phase, and that's going to be an area where a lot of guys are, are are weak at or could be weak at. In other words, dual purpose dogs. You have some some handlers that are amazing with their dogs on on the obedience, on the human tra- tracking, on the um, the bite stuff. But when it gets to detection, the dog's kind of weak there, yeah. right? Because the dog has a transition of mindset. And then you start adding in components now of like the water dock diving. You start adding in components of, you know, the different the different aspects of the heights, like the rappelling or the zip lining or, you know, the the low crawling where you have to crawl with your dog. I mean, those start changing the dynamics. So I'm really excited to see what they're gonna bring this year. Because from my understanding with the LAPD getting involved and, you know, some of the special operations getting involved, it's not gonna be a boring, a boring uh, competition, that's for sure. Yeah. And we're gonna bring everything. And leave nothing behind. <laughs> so, uh, for our listeners, when uh, we need to keep them up to date, uh, I mean, you're going, you're going out there right now to start the filming, I guess, and it'll probably yep. take several months. And then it starts. Uh, I think months. it premieres January, uh, January eighth is when it, when the okay when the show. Premieres. So first of the years when we can uh, yep. expect. So no no worries about COVID or any of that crap while you guys are out there. They're not. Uh, they're going to be well. Everybody's up. got to wear a mask when they're in one big group, right? Yeah. And then when 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 me and the dog competes, only the dog has to wear a mask. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, all right. <laughs> I'm kidding, dude. Relax. <laughs> well, you are going to California, so uh, <laughs> who knows? You know, I'm just yeah. I'm just proud that they're actually you know filming something. So that's that's yeah, great. that's that's awesome. And you know what, man? It's going to be an honor because. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? And, and, and my story, and and you know, I, I'm I'm literally the a perfect example of a guy who has come from from 
some hard places, right, in life, and how God has really restored me in many ways and, and helped me and brought me along, and, you know, where you were once, like, lost or forgotten. It's like, nope, God had a different plan for me, and who would have thought that, A, my dogs would be one of the, some of the most recognized dogs in the world for giant schnauzers, B, that we could even do it. I didn't, you know, when I first started with giant schnauzers, bringing them to the United States as far as training them for special operations, we're implementing. Okay, I'm an operator handler. I'm not mm-hmm. a trainer. And people say, well, what's the when you say operator handler, what the hell does that mean? It means that the first part of my special operations career for the first 10 years or, or 12 years, I'm, I'm a, I was a team leader and I led a team in. And then I added the component of, you know what? I'd like to bring in a dog. And that's a whole different story on that end, right? I'm going to bring in a dog. And uh, a dog came into the process. And so as a team leader, I'm usually at the front end with the, of the unit. Well, so is my dog. And I'm the guy who helped change and rewrite the specifications for the correction special operations on how we use canines that now is being adopted all over, not just the United States, the world. And so my counterparts call me from the UK or France from the prison system and say, you know, Garcia, you know, this is what we're doing. What are your what are your recommendations? And so that's really I couldn't have done that without the Lord, man. Period. End of story. And so these dogs are really what makes them very special is I call them the dogs with the human brain. I mean, literally, <laughs> they study the humans. I mean, they study their handlers. So that's why I always say I'm an operator handler because I can sling lead with my guys, same time, and I can operate and deploy my dogs seamlessly. And that is not an easy thing to do, right? And that's just the, the gift and the talent that, that the Lord has blessed me with to be able to do that. And these dogs make it easy for me to do that, man. That's right. They're not neurotic. They don't sit there and bark and do a lot of, a lot of crazy jacked up stuff. And so I'm, I'm really blessed by that. This episode of the Talking Lead AK Corner Season 2 is brought to you in part by Occam Defense. The guys at Occam love the AK, but didn't love burning their hands getting cut by their pre-sharpened gun, or the lack of options for accessories. After spending a few years in the lab, they've recently released the ODS-1775, which brings the best of the AR family to the Kalashnikov's reliability. It's still an AK under the hood. AK mags, forged Polish AK parts, but with American aerospace manufacturing practices and ingenuity. Check them out at OccamDefense.com or on Instagram at Solutions. So we're going to find out come January, I guess, uh, you are. exactly how and good you, know you what? are. <laughs> you know what we need to do? We should have a live podcast where we all watch it. We can comment and talk about it. Absolutely. We, Seriously, We dude. need to do that. So we can get, I can get some cool-ass handlers, you know, some guys from the teams, because you want to get some guys from teams because they'll give you the real deal and say, oh, yeah. that was totally foobarred up, man. How about you just did there? You'll you probably, do that, right? Yeah, but you'll probably, you'll probably make some friends on the show there, too. Um, maybe do a watch we show will, absolutely. With, with some of the cast or whatever. And, yeah, that would be yep. sweet. Yeah, if you know, if we if we were to come out for that to L.A., you know, for the red carpet, that. <laughs> oh man, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to have you guys out there, man. That would be great. That would be sweet. Yeah, taking definitely. the lead head to the canines, bringing the lead head brigade out. Yeah, that'd be sweet. <laughs> uh, well, we wish you the best on that, no doubt. So anything Thanks, that man. that we can do to help out, um, just let us know. You know, we're here. Just stay tuned to uh, Talking Leadman because you guys are all the latest. So I give you all the stuff first. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, but definitely uh, keep me posted as much as you can. I know. I, will. I know a lot of how that works. You know, you NDAs and shit like that. But very cool. That's exciting, really? man. I'm I'm excited for it. It is, man. Yeah, and that's a big network too. A and E. That's where the Walking is. Dead is. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, A and E. The dude. Walking Dead. They. Yeah. Well, it. it this is going to be. I mean, their viewership on, on the 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 uh, America's Top Dog was huge, and it's going to even be huge, bigger, even bigger than for season, season two. Yeah. Of, well, the fact that they got a, a season two tells on. you a lot, right there. You know, a lot of shows don't yeah. make it past season one. That's right. So we're going to be season two. Let's hope we make it to the top. <laughs> so and, I, and, that's great, and so man. I, I've, I've um, you know, it's twenty five grand if you win, dude. Oh, you get money too. Okay. So I've already signed the, um, the W nine, and they say they said, "Well, what are you going to do with the money?" And I said, "Well, I'm going to donate every dime of it to me." So I'm donating. I'm donating it to an organization called One Rescue. What is that? Talk about One that? Rescue. I've I've heard you talk about it. I think before. Yeah, talk about yeah. it. Yeah, One Rescue is the 
um, helping to recover um, children who are human trafficked. And so I, I have a big heart for kids who are um, who have been. Uh, that, that, they got caught up in heart, that right? system, yeah, the human trafficking system, yeah. and it's you know but the it human is, trafficking is, is even horrible. It's even, you know it's who's even horrible? What's going? On. You know who's big on that and is a big um, advocate and uh, champion for that is uh, Craig Sawman Sawyer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's I mean he's even got a task force where they go around the country and they track yep. these these people down. Um, I see these these people that they that are the the predators. And I deal with these animals all the time. I mean, I can't even tell you, you know, how how bad it is sometimes. But I mean, my job is, and that's the sucky part about my job is that, you know, I, I don't ask who's taken hostage. I don't, I don't really care. My job is to make sure that we rectify the situation, right? And so, you know, ninety nine percent of the times it's usually staff member that's taken hostage, but there is the odd occasion that an inmate will be taken hostage, yeah. and so it could be one of those individuals, but. You know, the thing about it is that people don't realize just how bad human trafficking is. But when you have kids, and I, and I can only imagine, right, a child taken from their – at five years old, ten years old, taken from their families and being used and, and mentally tormenting them and you know being passed around. And so I, I think it's been only the last year and a half that, that, that people have, have started recognizing human trafficking. Trump is doing an amazing thing about human trafficking, dude. I mean, he's really on it with the DOJ. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's great, man. That's a that's an awesome organization. So, yeah, even yep, even more reason for uh, for us to pull for you. And uh, you know, if there's like voting, you know, how some of these reality shows do voting and stuff like that. Yep. If there's if there's that, let us know, and we'll uh, definitely get involved. Yeah. With that. So that's one of the things that they ask. They say, do you plan to keep the money, or do you want to donate some of the money uh, to like a, a pet, or what? What is your cause? I said. Yeah, the cause is really simple. It's called One Rescue, and it's a human trafficking for kids. And they were like, whoa, <laughs> where'd <laughs> like, that come from? <laughs> I said, hey, man, it's just my line of work, dude, yeah. and, and I see Well, you know they're going to ask you to do like a little cameo thing talking about it, so you better get uh, get your, your speech all prepared. <laughs> I will. Yeah, you know what? It's a good thing you gave me a little advice there because I, I'll, I will uh, think about that, man. Yeah, you got to bone up so, on that, yeah. You yeah. Remember, you I remember, love your show, man. You remember Top Shot? You remember that show? Oh yeah, that only lasted what two seasons? No, it was like five seasons or so. Oh really? Yeah, it okay, went on. Yeah. It went on for a while. I wish they'd bring it back. I love that show. Yeah, I remember there was one dude shooting over his shoulder, and I was like, "That's pretty badass. Yeah. That is badass." Craig, or, or they would have people, they'd have people, um, you know, shoot some kind of old kind of musket gun. You know, I'm like, man, they that's, would do bows and arrows. Cool. They would do Adelaide. You know, old. Uh, <laughs> prehistoric type weapons and they did everything on that show and craig yeah. was on that show too uh, man craig saw man sawyer yeah. he was like one of the the experts that trained the contestants and stuff, so. yeah well <laughs> you know the shows that have the drama on it i'm really not into those things and i probably would never participate in a show that never, that forces you or requires you to have drama or sell your integrity or anything oh, this yeah. show with them with america's top dog wants you to showcase your skill set right yeah. and that's really the biggest thing the positiveness about about the show well they're gonna you know, dig on, they're gonna dig on heartstrings and you know they're gonna dig in people's backgrounds and you know stuff like that i've yep. just read through some of them here talking about their, you know cancer survivors and uh, all kinds of different stuff here so they're gonna they're gonna dig a little bit to try to get a little drama you know so uh leadheads that's coming up we're gonna keep you posted make sure you go out the magazine again that they need to go out that you're featured in that Tactical Life, and you can buy it in any major newsstand or what have you. Anybody that's got the magazines, you can get it there. And then your social meds. Hit, uh, where can people get your social meds? Uh, go to Instagram at STL underscore Garcia underscore Kilo One. And, uh, or STL Joseph Garcia on Facebook, man, and, and uh, send out some love. And the CSA unit, it's CSA unit, I think, on Instagram. <laughs> That's correct. Yep. Yep. And can you put it out there for your lead heads? Yeah, I'll put links in the show notes. You guys can go there uh, as well. But make sure you go follow him and give him all the uh, encouragement for his new show coming up. So, uh, Garcia, I know you got to go, buddy. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on. And we're going to catch up with you. And if you're coming through Tennessee on your way to California, stop in and say hey. Uh, I will. Thanks, uh, man. Uh, I'll Talk be to here. Y'all lead heads later, man. You guys are awesome. So until next time, Leadheads, as always, keep your loved ones close. And keep your canines uh, away from bitches in heat. 
<laughs> Unless you want some puppies. <laughs> Unless you want puppies. You can have some sweet puppies. Keep your canines safe, whatever you do. There you go. Take care, bro. Outtakes, outtakes, outtakes. Nice. You I got to go get that. I got, I got to take this. All right, we'll pick so up. Give me, give me a second. No, go ahead. Go. All right. So, okay, man. All right. <clears throat> Jeez. Controlled substance. Most. 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 Good puppy. Good puppy. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, he's a good boy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, what you doing? What are you doing? Hey, come here. Come here. Come here, pup. I'm back. Word. Any second, it's just a second here. Oh. Got most all riled up. Where you at? Right here. All right, we good? Yeah, man. All right. I was getting most all riled up. What? Who? Wow, man. Your dog. I was getting him all riled up. I was going. I like it. I like it, dude. RDB. RDB, of course. Of course, dude. You know what you love it. I know it. I know it well. Do you have a, a rail weapon. on yours? A what? Do you have a rail on a yours? A rail? Yeah. No. You got the Did Chad give you did Chad give you that rail? Yeah. Yeah, nice. I asked him to put this on it instead of uh it's the RDB seventeen. It's not their new defender. This is the okay. RDB seventeen with the, the that defender handguard that they've got. Yep. Yep. Hey, is that a is that a uh new grip? Was a hook grip? Oh no, it's a it's a little plastic thing that I put on there. I'm I'm gonna take it off. All right, it's gay. All right, Definitely. that's a great weapon, man. I'm telling you that right now. That freaking RDB is the bomb. Yeah, I'm gonna use it for hunting the this season. Are you? Yeah, I'll take down some deer, baby. Yep. Um. All right. So, um, what what's the last thing we said here? Well, uh, you have your camera on. Your camera's off. Oh, did it go off? Or are we just yeah? Are we just doing this on um, no on no? All right. Yeah, you're coming in all kind of hazy, so you must have like bad um, no. connection. No, I got you make connection. all that money. On... Really? Okay, I have good connection. If you got shitty on your end, it's shitty on your end. I got great on my end. It's thunderstorming like a mother here, man. Like huge. It's like a mad dog. So yeah. Hey, how long is this this interview for? Two, three hours? Yeah, about five. About five Perfect, hours. Man. At least know? at least I can eat at least I can eat through the bad boy. <laughs> no, you can eat. No, you can definitely eat. I mean, have you got food there or do you need to order some food? All right. You need an hour, I'll give you an hour. I need I need as long as we're gonna be talking and it's gonna be interesting and fun, that's how long we're gonna talk. But Oh, so in other words, am I supposed to just like if you ask me a sucking, question then I'm gonna cut it off. Right. Well, <laughs> Last show we, we did two and a half hours, you know. Are you kidding? No, the last uh, last episode was two and a half hours. Can we pick this up like in the morning if we had to? If if we're going and you need to get off, yeah, that's fine. When is this coming out, man? When when is when is it being released? I plan on dropping it Friday. Oh, that's a good one. That, that's perfect timing, actually. I thought so. All right, man. Let's do this thing. Am I coming? Am I coming in? Okay. Yeah, you're coming in good. So uh, I'm going to drive a, a drink real quick. All right. Take me like three minutes at most. Jack Daniels. Get you one. Yeah. <laughs> Keto, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Come here, girl. 
Why? Oh, why? Why is my resolution not good on this one? Is it because he needs to be in smaller resolution? I don't know. He's blurry. Blurry eye. Share screen. Nope. I'm not going to share my screen. Hold call. Click. Please hold. Audio and video setting. Ooh. Let's do that. Hmm? Going into my lab. I'm going into my office. It's at. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> you discovered um, the, uh, to the toys? I am. I decided to go into my New York office. That's, <laughs> I didn't know you could do that shit. That's cool. Got a it's wolf. not a schnauzer, but it'll show that. What kind of dog is that? A husky? It's a wolf. A wolf. Only you would be a wolf, dude. She's a Malamute. Oh! <laughs> Excellent.